Hi, friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House. It's story time, brought to you by the historic City Opera House in beautiful downtown Traverse City. I'm your host, Ben Whiting, and on every episode of this show, we're going to have a great story read by a special guest and then have a fun activity that you can participate in right from your home or classroom using common objects that you can find in your home or classroom. Each activity will have a theme that correspond with that day's book. And it could, the theme could be anything from science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics, and even local culture. Today's theme is creatures. Here in Northern Michigan, we're lucky to be surrounded by nature and we have a lot of different places we can explore it. And perhaps none is more famous than Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, which is part of the National Park Service. Sleeping Bear Dunes is home to miles of sandy beaches, bluffs that tower 450 feet above Lake Michigan, lush forests, clear inland lakes, and a ton of flora and fauna, which is a fancy scientific way of saying plants and animals. In addition to these places, there's also an inland lighthouse, farmhouses that are over 100 years old, wetlands, miles of coastline, all providing a lot of places for a ton of different creatures to live. Today, we're gonna to be learning about creatures, objects, and places that all reside within Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. And for today's activity, we're going to be creating a model of an animal that disperses seeds and pollinates plants just like they do in nature. Now, the things you'll need for today's activity include various boxes, some foam blocks and balls, uh, foam boards, pipe cleaner, fun fabric, masking tape, a bag of bird seed, and everyone's favorite, googly eyes. Now, if you don't have these objects readily available, that is okay. Go ahead and watch along as today's activity leader guides us through our project, and then you can come back and watch later when you have the objects at hand. And now, on to today's book. The special guest we have today helping us read the book is Mr. Scott Tucker. Mr. Tucker is superintendent for Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, which is responsible for protecting animal habitats, uh, preserving parkland, as well as protecting some cultural and historical sites within our region. The book he'll be reading today is Up North Alphabet. And with that, take it away, Mr. Tucker. Well, hey, everybody, thanks for having me today as we are going to read Up North Alphabet, written and illustrated by Ashley Walter. This book is being read with permission from Pinky Finger Press. Really excited to uh, talk about our natural environment today. You know, as a park ranger, we have uh, probably the greatest job in the world. We get to go to work where you go on vacation. And the staff that works at Sleep Bear Dunes uh, it's kind of like a small city. We have biologists, we have teachers, we have carpenters, we have plumbers, we have budget analysts. Really, any career you can think of, um, there's a park service job that does that. And so, as we talk today specifically about some of the natural resources in our community, some of the things that we can explore in your backyard, uh, hopefully you'll be inspired to go find a national park and uh, get excited about what's around you. So let's get started. Come along on an adventure through the Up North alphabet. Are you ready? Let's go. I explored Up North and I saw an alewife. An alewife is a small fish that salmon in Lake Michigan love to eat. I explore Up North and I saw a bay. A bay is part of a larger body of water that is set off from the main body of Grand Traverse Bay or Sutton's Bay off of Lake Michigan. Many ships seek refuge on the bay during a storm. The shore of Sleeping Bear Dunes has over 50 miles of shoreline. Overlooking Sleeping Bear Bay, where hundreds of shipwrecks from the late 1800s still lay today. I explored north and I saw a cherry. Northern Michigan is known around the world for the cherry, a delicious and healthy fruit. Northern Michigan grows the most tart cherries in the United States of America. I explored up north and I saw dune grass. Dune grass is a native plant that grows on the sand along the water. As I said before, 50 miles of beach line, all lined with dune grass that stabilizes the, the sand dunes and keeps them in place. 
I explored up north and I saw an elk. An elk is a kind of deer that likes to live together with other elk in a group. Elk is one thing you will not find in Sleeping Bear Dunes, but you will find them here in Michigan. I explored up north and I saw the 45th parallel. The 45th parallel marks the line around the Earth that is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. I explored up north and I saw a grayling. Grayling is a kind of salmon fish. I explored up north and I saw hops. Hops are the flower of a pop plant that grow up in strings. I explored up north and I saw an island. One of the most spectacular locations in Sleeping Bear Dunes are the North and South Manitou Islands set off in the middle of Lake Michigan. An island is a piece of land that is completely surrounded by water. I explored up north and I saw a jack in the pulpit. A jack in the pulpit is a wildflower that blooms in spring. I explored up north and I saw a Kirkland's warbler. A Kirkland's warbler is a rare bird that nests in northern Michigan's jack pine forests. Jack pine forests sometimes grow after a fire. I explored up north and I saw Leland blue stones. A Leland blue is a stone that can sometimes be found along Lake Michigan's shoreline. The stone is actually a byproduct of the iron ore smelting industry from the late 1800s. I explored up north and I saw a morel mushroom. People in northern Michigan like to look for morel mushrooms in the spring. Many people love to find them in the forest and cook them. If you come out to Sleeping Bear Dunes in the spring, you can actually collect mushrooms from the National Lakeshore. The secret is, is don't tell anyone where you found it because they'll come back year after year. And once you have a, a mushroom spot, it's always a secret. I explored up north and I saw probably one of the most spectacular things, the northern lights. The aurora borealis, sometimes called the northern lights, is a spectacular natural light display in the northern sky. I explored up north and I saw an otter. Northern American river otters live along the coast and waterways of northern Michigan. My family saw a river otter uh, just a couple months ago uh, down at Esch Beach. I explored up north and I saw a Petoskey stone. The Petoskey stone is Michigan State stone. It is fossilized coral from millions of years ago. If you're walking the beach as a sleeping bear, there's a good chance you'll come across a Petoskey stone. But one of the things we do as the National Park Service is we protect the natural environment for future generations. So if you do find a Petoskey stone in Sleeping Bear, we ask you to leave it where you found it. Only take a picture, leave some footprints, and leave that adventure for someone else to follow behind you. And then as you explore more, I explored up north and I saw a quill box. Porcupine quill boxes are beautifully crafted by Native Americans. The first wildlife my family saw when we hiked in Sleeping Bear Dunes was a porcupine climbing a tree near the Treat Farm. I explored up north and I saw reindeer lichen. Reindeer lichen is a type of common lichen found growing in the forest floor in northern Michigan. Lichen is a fancy mix of algae and fungus. As I explored up north, I saw the sleeping bear. The Native Americans created the story about the sleeping bear, a mama perched on top of the sand dunes waiting for her cubs to cross Lake Michigan. I'm honored to uh, work at Sleep Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, named after the Ojibwe story of a mother bear escaping Wisconsin and a fire, making her way across Lake Michigan with her cubs. The cubs today still stand as North and South Manitou Islands in the middle of Lake Michigan. But as I continue exploring up north, I saw Trillium. A Trillium flower is a protected wild orchid that blooms in Northern Michigan forest in the spring. If you hike out on the Treat Farm Trail at Sleeping Bear in the spring, you will see the forest blanketed in trillium flowers. Probably one of the most spectacular uh, images of, you'll see. I explored up north and I saw Ursa Major. Ursa Major is a constellation of stars in the northern sky that represents a big bear. The constellation also includes the Big Dipper. As I explore up north, I saw Vignoles. Vignoles is a kind of wine grape grown in northern Michigan. I explored up north and I saw a white pine. The mighty white pine is Michigan State tree. It is a conifer that keeps its needles all year long. I explored up north and I saw cross-country skis. 
Cross-country skiing is a fun sport that is a popular way to explore northern Michigan in the winter when there's snow on the ground. I explored up north and I saw a yellow lady slipper. The yellow lady slipper is a beautiful native Michigan orchid wildflower that blooms in the northern Michigan forest near streams in the spring. Finally, as I explored up north, I saw, unfortunately, zebra mussels. Zebra mussels is an invasive species that came across the ocean on ships and eventually ended in northern Michigan lakes and rivers. Really excited to join you today to tell you the story of northern Michigan, as well as the wildlife that you might find. And I challenge you to get out in your backyard, your local park, or a national park. There's 423 of them around the country. And explore your environment. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And now, before we take what we read and put it into action, it's time for today's moment of mindfulness. So, move around a little bit, take a deep breath, and clear your mind to prepare for a little bit more learning later on. Hello, everyone. I would like to teach you a very special technique today. It's a relaxation technique that I was taught by my instructor. So sometimes life can get us a little bit frustrated when we can get that bubble up. Yeah, I know you know what I'm talking about where you start to get frustrated and angry. And that time when your body is telling you that, I have a great technique for you and it's super cool. It's called black belt breathing. So when you start to feel frustrated or overwhelmed and life is getting big, maybe you have a lot of homework, maybe somebody's not treating you very nicely and you start to get angry, find a spot where you can be by yourself and you're gonna go down to your knees like this. Take your hands and bring them like this with your palms up, pull your elbows back. You're gonna take a deep breath in and when you exhale, Push your hands forward, turning them and crossing them, just like a master. Inhale and exhale, just like that. We do it five times and exhale. You're giving your body oxygen, which helps your muscles relax and helps you think clearly. Great, let's do it one more time together. In and out. Excellent job. This black belt breathing can also be done while you're standing up. And really, at any time that you feel overwhelmed, frustrated, or angry, this is a great way to train your body and your mind to react appropriately with kindness, courtesy, and respect. Well done, everyone. And now for today's activity. To help us out with today's activity, we have Miss Kelly Obranovic, who is a teacher with Traverse City Area Public Schools Eastern Elementary. Miss Obranovic, introduce yourself and get us started with today's activity. All right, Luce, how are you doing today? Good. Good? We can do some fun stuff today? Mm -hmm. Yep. Remember how we've been learning about how um, animals can move seeds? Uh-huh. Yeah? Can you think of any ways that an animal might be able to move a seed? Um, maybe like any small animal and like a squirrel or any of those, or a chickmuck, any of those small animals find a seed and grab it, find a dog, make a promise with it, and and then um, they, their dog will dig a big hole and then the squirrel will put, dig the seeds into the hole and then the dog will <laughs> be, like cover back up and then it might rain and there's a flower. Yeah, so maybe animals might form a friendship and together they work together to plant a seed. Yes. Could that happen? Yeah, it I could happen. So. It probably could happen. What's another way that an animal might move a seed? If there was like um, some animals around and they all found seeds they could, and there was like a lot of what about, dogs. What about the ones that fly? 
Oh, what could those do? They what about could, birds? They could find a seed, grab it, and then fly, drop it, and maybe? Yeah, so birds could, could carry seeds around either in their mouths or on their feathers, and then it drops, and mm -hmm. then that seed could grow into yes. a plant or a flower. And when kids kind of run, it will get buried and it will rain and there will be some flowers. Exactly. What about when, what about weather? Could weather ever, ever move a seed? Like when there's a big, big windstorm. Like, and um, there, someone was gardening in that storm. Some, the seeds could go everywhere and then when the storm is over, it might rain and they'll plant. Oh, they'll get buried, and that's how they're going to get some plants. Oh, my goodness. Those are so many great ideas. Okay, we have a couple already. What about if we put them down on here so we don't forget them? And okay. then we'll see if we can think of any more. Okay. Okay. So one of the ideas that we had was that a bird might come and carry it inside of its beak, right? Yes, so I'm going to draw a little bird here. And here's his head, and here's his beak, and he's flying along in the sky, and he has a little seed in there, right? Uh -huh. And then that seed might drop into the ground, and then the rain comes, right? Uh -huh. And then eventually, a plant will grow, whether it's a flower or maybe a vegetable or a fruit. Uh -huh. Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay. So we said that. We also said that there might be like a seed in a tree, uh -huh. right? And then the yeah. wind comes and what does it do? It blows them around. It blows the seed and then it ends up in the ground, right? Uh -huh. And it might grow into something else. Yeah. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use these ideas that we put together and we're going to see if we can make an animal that could move seeds around with the stuff yes. that we have. Yes. Do you have any ideas of what we could do? Let's make a sheep like this one. You want to make a sheep like that one? Yes. Do you think we can get seeds to attach to its body? Yeah, okay. with all these little seeds. Yeah, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's show everybody what we have to work with. So uh -huh. we have some seeds in our tray, right? We have some what else of this do we have? Fluffy soft stuff. Fluffy, soft stuff. What else do we have? These. What are those? Do you know? Um, no. That's Velcro, right? And so Velcro is really sticky, like an animal's body or fur might be. We have scissors. What do we have here? Um, some paper and confetti that me and my sister cut it out. <laughs> That's all ready to go, right? And what are what's in there? Googly eyes. Googly eyes. We might need that for the um, animal's eyes. Yep. And we have some. Paper towel rolls, right? Yes. We could use this for their body. Yeah. Yep, and we have some pipe cleaners we might be yes. able to use for the legs, for yeah. the arms. Yes. And we have a little bit of string if we need yes. it. Uh -huh. Right? So and let's, some glue. And we have glue, yep, in case we need to attach something. So what yeah. do you think we should start with first? Um, let's start making the sheep. You want to start making the sheep? Okay, yeah. so what are we going to use this part for? The body. The body. Okay, so we're going to use this and as our sheep's body. Can you so you just do it keep now, cutting. Please? You might want to take, and we'll do it just a couple layers at a time. So we'll yeah. go like this. Uh -huh. Yep. And then look at when we did that, it gave us two pieces. Yes. So we can actually use both these pieces to start and wrap it around uh -huh. our body. So we'll wrap it around like this, and, and we'll need some glue to attach it. Yes. Okay, so and why don't need... you hold this, yeah, and I'll put the glue on, okay? Okay. All right, so we're gonna put glue all around our body yep. like this so that we can make our animal. Yes, because we and then don't want to you can start to cover it. With some of this fur. Yeah, sheep fur. Sheep fur. Okay, so we have a sheep body. Now what do we need? Um, let's start adding the, this stuff. Okay. So the Velcro might just make it a little extra sticky, right? Yeah. Like an animal's fur might be. So these are actually stickers. So we can just put these um, right on here. Yeah, okay. I had Why don't you hold it up and show everybody what we have? Okay. Now we need to do the, the head or the legs. I think we could bend these into legs. So we're gonna use pipe cleaners and we're gonna bend them into some legs. 
right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Can do and this. what we might do is actually just poke a little hole in here really carefully. You can cut just a little slit if we bend it in half. Uh -huh. And then we can stick this inside of it and make a little leg. Yeah. Legs. Perfect. Yeah, I know. I'm and I'll get this side ready while you bend those. So I'm just gonna cut a little slit in here so that we can sneak those legs inside the body. Can I help you? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna go like this and then bend it in half like this. Okay. And then we have two legs that we can stick inside the body. Yes, yeah, stick inside the baby. Perfect. Yes. This is so easy to do with stuff you just have at home, right? Yeah. Do we just grab all the stuff from our house? Yes, we mm -hmm. do. Okay, so now we have to give it a little bit of a face. Yes, and okay. we also need some of that paper. So we're going to take two googly eyes. Yeah, two. And then we're going to glue them onto the front, right? Yeah, but how are we going to make the face if there's no something that we can put a smile on? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. Let's be scientists. What could we do? Um, we could use maybe one of those cut. I could cut, you could draw a circle and then I can fold it and cut it out and then we can kind of like glue it right here. Okay, draw the circle for her. The glue fell. Oh. I'll move the sheep away a little. Okay, and then you're gonna cut that out? Yeah. Okay, you cut that out. And while you cut that out, how about I make some ears? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna use these, this little pink paper and do some little pink ears. Some floppy ears. Yeah, floppy. Um, I might just cut that little edge. Okay, so I have two little eye or ears, and you made the face, Wait. and we have eyes. I don't know which way to cut this because I can't cut this way or kind of this you way. You know what, we can, you're worried about the line? Yeah. We can just glue it this way so that we don't see the line. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so now we have our face and we're just gonna attach it to our body. So I'll put some glue on here. Okay. It's kind of hard because that one's really tricky. Yeah. Why is it tricky? Because it's really hard to squeeze Oh yeah, out. you gotta squeeze it nice and hard. Yep. Okay, then we're gonna put it on here. I'll add the googly eyes. Okay. Can you add the glue, I'll please? do the glue and she's gonna do the googly eyes. Good teamwork. Yes. Really good teamwork. Say teamwork makes the dream work. Yep. Well, you said it, so I don't have to say <laughs> it. <laughs> You're right. But we can always say it twice. Yeah, sometimes. There we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, yeah. look at that. Oh, that one's up. They're upside down. It's looking good, isn't it? All right, let's now add let's the add the ears. ears. Oh, let's turn them around for we don't see the pen. Okay, I'll glue them on. Okay. One ear. One ear. Floppy. I'll turn it this way so everyone can see it. I'm turning the eyes around. Yeah? Okay. Looks like a sheep to me. Let's add the smile. So we yes. made our sheep and now we have to see if this, this animal rolls around in the seed, is it going to attach to its fur? So be yeah. really gentle with it. And she's gonna roll it around in the tray of seeds and see what happens. She's having so much so fun. So much fun. Let's get all the way around. Oops. Ooh, like <laughs> you probably need seat. some time to dry. But oh my gosh, look at him. What does yeah. he have on him? Seeds. Seeds, right? Yeah, I see some up here, here. And I see some over here. And he runs along. Yeah. <gasps> look what's falling off of my sheep. But look at all these seeds that have fallen. Yes. Maybe they'll turn into flowers. Yeah, that would take a while, right? So eventually the, um, the dirt will move around when people walk by or the wind yes. blows, and then they end up getting planted in the ground. Yes. And then the sun comes out, and what else uh -huh. does it need? It needs some rain. Rain, yep. And then all those seeds that this sheep just moved around uh -huh. end up turning into... Flowers. Flowers or plants, right? Like this thing with all these things that animals might do to plant seeds. Yeah. And this one's different because there's not an animal in this you're, picture. You're right. That's actually just something that might happen in nature. So we came up with lots of ways that animals might move seeds. Yes. And then we made our own model. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, girlfriend. How about a high five? Nice work.
work, everyone. Well, that is it for today's episode of Live from the City Opera House. It's story time. We hope you'll tune in next time. And remember, you can watch future and past episodes at tcaps247.com on your local PBS station and at michiganlearning.org. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is your host, Ben Whiting, saying stay safe, have fun, and keep learning. Take care. This program is made possible in part by the Michigan Department of Education, the State of Michigan, Forefront Credit Union, the Schmidt Community Fund, the Les and Ann Biederman Foundation, the Olson Foundation, and viewers like you.